Yes, that's on. Got a lot of people on this prayer list up here. <laughs> Need to add to it, don't Who? All right. Jane well we had a big list we got a little bigger list just I'm just gonna read these off right and we're gonna pray there's Jared just remember him Eugene Weeks uh, Miss Bobby Yates Mr. Tom Bradford Andrew Carpenter Andrea, Miss Andrea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I was, made me look for Bruce. Bruce ain't here, huh? He said he's gonna be here. But anyway, Andrea, um, Caleb King. Yes, sir. Is that Brent Height? Brett. Brett Height. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hester. Hester. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Brett Hester. All right, I couldn't read the Spanish writing. My bad. <laughs> Miss Pat Ferguson. Yes, sir. Julia Jackson. Sandy DeBusk. Uh, Jane, Miss Jane Baines. Yes, sir. And I put on here Caleb and Chastity, my son and daughter in law. Yes, sir. We continue to lift them up. Janelle Lemoyne. Yes, sir. Miss Janelle Lemoyne. So it's a lot. Hannah's on the ship. Oh, is he? Okay, for them traveling. Yes, well, let's pray, y'all. It's a lot, lot of things. But we know the Father hears them all, knows your heart. He already knows what we have need of before we pray, right? And so when we come to him, when you have confidence, Hallelujah. Father cares about our, our needs and our cares. Father, we thank you tonight. Father, for this uh, group of people that are joined together. We right now unite our faith together. And I believe, Father, whatever we agree on, it'll be done. And so, Father, we agree right now on all these things. These names are read out. Some are sick. Father God, some are traveling. Some have experienced loss. Others are fighting, Father God, uh, uh sickness and disease, infirmity in their body. And we speak healing over every one of those right now in Jesus' name. We send your word. Father God said by Jesus' stripes, they are healed. 
You sent your word. I said it today, Father God. You sent your word and healed them, delivered them from their destruction. That word you sent was Jesus. He put upon him flesh. And like we talked about here in church Sunday, he bore those stripes in his body that by those stripes we could be healed. And Father, so we send healing tonight to all these people, Father God, that need a healing. Father, be it in their stomach. Father God, be it in their heart. Be it in their uh, liver. Be it in their blood. Father God, it could be diabetes, it could be cancer, it could be, Father God, anything. We curse infirmity, we curse sickness, we loose your healing. And Father God, so every person that knows these people right now are releasing their faith for their friend, for their loved one, for their family member. And we say they are healed in Jesus' name. Father God, for these traveling, you give your angels charge over them. They'll have traveling mercy and safety. Father God, we thank you for, for Father God, people who are advancing or doing things in life. Father God, that you continue to open doors. Father God, and make provision in every step of the way. We just thank you, Father, that you're so faithful of every one of our needs. Father, we thank you for lifting up those that are downcast, that are downtrodden, that might be, uh, Father God, hurting, might be depressed, might be, Father God, just fighting emotional loss, whatever it may be, Father God, we thank you that you're there present with them and lifting them up strengthening them, encouraging them. Father, we just thank you that you're supernatural that way. That, Father God, in our darkest hour, you're there. Father God, when we don't know how we will sustain, you carry us. Father God, when we don't know how to take another step, you put a foot forward. We thank you, Father God, for supernatural strength and empowerment tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well... One thing I found out in the first couple of minutes is that this microphone without a felt cover just goes the whole time. So, cool. So if you hear a bunch of noise, it's, I'm not trying to be noisy. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to get into the Word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, you know, last few weeks I said that, uh, you know, I kept talking about uh, the times through the holidays and I know people are busy and people are, are, are hunting and, and holidaying and traveling and celebrating and some are not doing all those good things. Some are depressed and don't like the holidays. I talked to somebody yesterday and said, I hate the holidays. Okay, praise God. But what I want to say is, is that uh, we've made it to 2023. Yeah. 57, 83, Hebrew calendar. And uh, God's got good things planned for his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said last week I've been wanting to share some things, you know, get into some, some things, right, and teach. Some of these things that uh, this is certainly not going to be new, uh, new information for some of you. Um, I'm not worried about that part. Meaning that's something you say when you, you know, you're trying to impress. I just said that to say that um, I do believe God will bring you deeper revelation and understanding of some things. And uh, this ain't information for the sake of information. This is, uh, uh, this is what we know God is doing. This is what we know that, that God is uh, doing in our midst. He's been trying to do for thousands of years. In some places he's accomplished this. In others he, he's not. And that is... Uh, the equipping of the body of Christ. That is the alignment of the body of Christ. That is us being all that we are called to be and meant to be for His glory um, so that He can use us all in a powerful way. Right. And, um, and so those are exciting things. Um, if you would, open your Bible with me tonight. Let's just jump in. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I got everything but that in my Bible. Hallelujah. I got papers everywhere holding all kind of pages but that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just wanted to say just uh, one more comment on that about uh, the season. So I, I kind of feel a completeness tonight, a little bit more in my spirit that um, 
that a lot of you are back. And, and, and um, I don't know if anybody's feeling what I'm trying to say, but what I'm trying to say is, is that uh, we really had some momentum going into the holidays. I don't think we've lost that momentum. I think that, uh, but I think that it's time to kind of recoup the momentum that God has for us and, and ride his wave, ride his spirit forward you, in what God has. Now, I can tell y'all, I can tell you something that it's not been without opposition. Uh, I've had, I've had uh, two tough weeks uh, personally, and uh, I don't say that defeated. I just say that, that uh, it's real. And so, you know, when... when uh, you know, one of the things that, that sometimes I think leadership does is they project the image like they don't ever have a problem or they don't ever have a struggle. Well, you're a liar if you don't ever have a struggle. I'll be more honest than that. You ain't doing nothing for God, you don't have a struggle. And, um, and, and if you doubt that word, throw your Bible away before you leave nice, chunk it in the trash out there and we'll burn it for you or something. I'm, I'm getting real strong because my point is, is that if you realize that all the apostles were crucified, killed, murdered, and if you realize all that Paul went through just to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, I say it all the time, but it's the truth. We painted a bad mental image in people's minds in, in Christendom in America to think that life was just going to always be good. And if you come to Jesus, things are just wonderful. No, your faith is tried as with fire. And if you don't remember that in the middle of your, your trial, you'll give up. And so I don't know why we dismiss the reality of this kingdom that we have an adversary. Now the last time I had an adversary, he was fighting me. He wasn't encouraging me. So I'm just saying if you're not going up against any opposition, maybe you ain't taking no territory. I, I ain't being ugly, I'm being real, that's the way it is. See, when I played ball all my life, be it football, basketball, ran track, and all them things that I did all those years, I always had an opponent. They never laid down and cried and just let me win. It don't matter if I was up 100 points. They was always fighting. You know what I'm saying? We have an adversary. He don't give up. He don't, he don't quit. He don't run scared because we get anointed or we start seeing God do amazing things. He don't. He will leave or flee Depart for a season, but he's coming back around. The Bible said we'll resist the enemy. He'll flee. He don't stay gone. Now, the word of the kingdom, I taught you this months ago, you know, reiterated. I'm sure we've heard these things before, some of you. But the fact is, is that when you hear the message of the kingdom, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. He's like, if they ever get the concept that they're in a kingdom, not just in a, a church, they're in a kingdom, they're in my kingdom now. I'm their king. They're my citizens. They're my children. They're my inheritance. They're the heirs of my kingdom. He said, if they start getting that, the enemy's like, I'm over. I'm done with. Y'all, at the end of the book, when this thing is all said and done, what we will eventually see, be it our generation or not, I think it might be, what we're going to see is, is there will be a one world government with a guy standing in the temple in Jerusalem on the temple mount in the third temple calling himself Christ. He'll be the Antichrist. And the reason I'm even mentioning that, he will be setting up a kingdom to rule the world. But Jesus will come back and say, no kingdom will rule this whole thing but my kingdom. And that's the way it's going to not end, but translate into, right, the millennial reign of Christ. That is the reality of the life me and you are living. That's the reality, you know, of how it's going to come down. And, uh, and so uh, we are in a season where uh, you're all back, I'm back, hallelujah. You can stick it up there, hallelujah. Um, stand it up tall for me. did a good job there. Hallelujah. Um, so in Ephesians 4, let's, let, let's go with this because, because maybe we'll gain some, some more understanding of, of our role, our purpose, what you know this is kind of all about to, to another degree. Um, let's start in verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth, he said, from this point forward, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind. 
So if you'll make the Word of God personal to you, He's literally saying to you, I don't want you to keep living like you've been living in the vanity or in the ignorance or in the lack of understanding that you have. I want you to gain a deeper understanding. This ain't in vain. He's, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's telling them. Vanity. It's not in vain. This is important. And listen to what he says. He says, having the understanding dark and being alienated, um, being alienated, uh, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And so anyway, he goes on to say, he says, uh, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lasciviousness. And he's just talking about their, um, you know, giving herself over to sin and stuff like that. But um, so... A lot of things that Paul was saying in Ephesians, right, is he's trying to tell them that, uh, that there was a different way to live. There was a way that was uh, to present ourselves to God that was fulfilling to God and we could walk in the fullness of that or not, right? And so what I want to look at tonight is, is I want to look at the ministry gifts, I want to look at the ministry gifts. Let me, let me turn to the right place I want to get to. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe it is. Yeah, yeah. That's where I want to start in verse 8. I started in 18. My bad. Listen to this, he says, he says, Wherefore he saith when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. I said in a sermon a few weeks back, I said Jesus was the one that gave the giftings. And I didn't quote the verse. I said we'll get to that another time. I didn't stop there. But here it makes it very clear that our giftings come from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen verse 9. He said, Now he that ascended is also he that descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens that he might fill all things. Or that really tr could have been translated fulfill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says that we be hence no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking truth in love, we may grow up in him in all things which is the head, even Christ for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And then he goes into what I said. He was telling them, don't keep walking in the vanity of your mind. Understand what I told you. So what he told them was, he gave them, Paul, gave the church at Ephesus an outline of what it would take to walk in the fullness of God in the earth. That's pretty good. <laughs> so when Jesus ascended, he also descended first and he gave gifts to men. That word gifts, I talked about it a week or two ago, a few weeks back. That word gifts is exactly the way it sounds. It is a present or something presented to someone. It is a gift. It is a gift. We just went through Christmas where you gave gifts. And so if somebody gave you a gift for it to become yours or you to benefit from the gift, you had to open it. Right? You had to, you had to receive it, the gift. I can't skip over this uh, too quickly because that is absolutely the first thing you need to remember is, is that 
for you to receive that for which somebody supplies, or that, in other words, for you to get out of somebody what God's put in them, you have got to receive it. You've got to receive it. And that's important. Um, Paul would often tell them, some of y'all have known me after the flesh or have known me before, but I'm not that man anymore. People knew Peter before as Simon Barjona, but they had to get to know him as Peter. Simon Peter, the rock, the Petra, right, of God. Somebody who had a revelation of God, an apostle, someone who was sent to do something great on behalf of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I was, I was taught this years ago, and, uh, and so I hope to share this with you uh, now. This is real simple, but it's a picture. Y'all can all see me standing here right now, right? So who am I? Well, depends on how you know me. When I was younger, I was an athlete. I had people come up to me and say, oh, you're the one that plays ball. That's me. You know me as an athlete. I had people that grew up with me, and we hung out, and we'd done all kinds of things together, and they knew me as a friend. My mom and daddy knew me as a son. My employer knew me as an employee. When I had the Christian rock band, they knew me as a drummer. Oh, you play drums for Axios. When I became a husband, and I am one now, Marsha knows me as a husband. My kids know me as a daddy. My grandkids are getting to know me as a grandpa. It could go on and on. That's how people know you too. By the relationship you have with them, that's how they know you. I heard years ago a minister say that, uh, he said, I won't be all of y'all's uh, close friend because you couldn't handle my humanity. But the most important thing God did was he put a gift in me and you need that more and you need my friendship. I didn't like those words really, but it's still truth tonight in 2023. If you can't hang out with me because I get crazy and I watch a football game, then don't hang out with me. Because what God put in me is much more valuable than somebody to watch a football game with. Now, I hope you're getting what I'm saying because it's vital. It's vital. So I said something early on when I came here six, seven, eight months ago. I said, I said, there's, a, there's this thing going around in the church where uh, religious people say this. Um, it's a religious saying. They'll say this, it's level at the cross. We're all equal in God. Jesus died the same price for every one of y'all. I agree with that 100% in the sense that none of us are more special than anybody else. But if you take the attitude that we're all the same, then you're going to miss all the gifts that are sitting around you. This is a good word. I mean, God's gave me a lot. You just, you just keep sitting there eating. You're going to see some things. You will. So, because, you, you know, hardly nobody knows, and I'll get in this another night, Pastor Lamar is the only one, and, and, and Bruce, probably the people that have been in ministry, only ones that can even half relate to what I've lived through, what I've been through. Y'all have no idea what Pastor Lamar's lived through. But what God put in any of you here, the body of Christ will have to start acknowledging who you are and what you have. So, Brother Keith, that's in my life, he pastors a church in Oklahoma City called the Father's House. And I know him on one level... 
and then other people in his own church know him a different way, but not even on the level I know him at because they don't see him on that level. So he taught me years ago. He said, I'll be whatever you call me. I'll be whatever you name me. Now, listen to me when I say this. This is biblical. And I'll prove it another time. I'll probably prove it tonight. But you become, I become to you what you call me. It's a spiritual principle. So Paul admonished them almost at the beginning of every book he wrote, Paul, an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, do I have to commend myself unto you again? Don't you remember who I am? The reason he wrote that was because he said, I could become a martyr, I could become your friend. I could become a man who passed through that had gifts of God. I can be whatever you want me to be. But if you forget that God sent me as an apostle, you lose that benefit. He said, and I don't know how to convince you again. As a matter of fact, so now when you read that, you're going to get what he was saying. He said, matter of fact, I'm not even going to try to convince you who I am again. Some of the closest people to you won't even know who you are. Some of the closest people to me don't even know who I am. Don't know. They may never know. My kids don't really know who I am. But to those who call me what I am, that's who I am to you. So if they call me daddy, I'm daddy. If they say I'm a friend, I'm a friend. I call Brother Keith, Paul Keith, I call him my spiritual father and that's who he is to me. Somebody say, well, why you call him that? Because of what he's sown into me from the word of God. It produced a new life yes, of God. faith and understanding. Amen. So I call him spiritual father. He's got people right around him, maybe even his own child, and they don't call him their spiritual father. But he is what I call him. And I receive that from him. You. you don't walk up to somebody at Walmart you ain't never met before and say, hey, could you leave me your inheritance? They say, are you my child? I don't know you that way and you don't know me that way. You see what I'm saying? I'd be ignorant. Why? You don't know them that way. This is all, about one of the things this Bible's telling us. It tells us millions of things. This is one of the things it's telling us. You are what people call you. And that's what you are to them. Period. We'll move on now. Hallelujah. Let me say this to you right now. This ain't about me. All of y'all are something. Every one of y'all are something. You might not even know what you are yet. But you something. Some of y'all are more something than the rest of them. Seriously, y'all are all something in God. You are all something in the kingdom. Every single person. I, I'm sorry that religion taught it that there's a couple of chosen people get behind the pulpit and that's the ministry. I'm sorry. That was a lie. That's a lie. God saved you, brought you in to the kingdom of God and he put all of y'all in a category, every single human. Y'all want to look at some of them? Let's look at them. Marsh, you want to come right for me? You probably got, oh, this thing ain't got a filter on it. And, and well, the, my doctor told me it was, it was beating, son, I can tell you that. Number one. Apostle. Write it bigger. <laughs> Let them see it. If y'all taking notes, I'm doing this so you can take notes, you can see some things. We'll go through this for weeks. Number two, prophet. And, and uh, just so you know, like on my paper, if you have to come back over here with, you know, see, you know what I mean? You can do that too. So it's, it's going to be a few of them. Evangelist. Pastor, 
teacher. All right. If you don't mind just stepping right beside the board over there, we'll keep teaching. So a lot of y'all know this five-fold ministry. Y'all read that a bunch in the Bible, right? Y'all with me? Come on, somebody can amen this Catholic church. Hey! <laughs> Woo! All right. Glory to God. Go ahead and put like a six and seven and eight on there because we're going to break out past five. <laughs> well, Brother Andy, I don't fit into none of those. That's you and Pastor Lamar. All right, so uh, miracles. Gifts of healing. Helps. It's a good thing she's short, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Governments. And you're going to get it all in one line. Number 10. Diversity of tongues. <clears throat> you're in there somewhere. You're, you're in here somewhere. If you're not in here somewhere and we get to heaven, come find me so me and you can go to, to the Lord Jesus and find out why he left you out. We'll probably teach on these as we go through this, not tonight. But down here in governments and helps, you also have, you could put a number 11, but I'm just going to put it in one of these, and that's what the Bible says is uh, someone who supernaturally gives. God has equipped you to be a giver. Now, Here's the thing, is that some of us may do more than one thing, but everybody does at least one. I know you're taking it in. Y'all quiet as church mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's God, man. It's the way it works. God never chose anybody. See, what, what happened with, uh, and I always hate to beat up on the Catholic Church, but they shouldn't have changed everything. I mean, they're just guilty. So, so, and I got Catholic family, so I don't think I hate Catholics. I don't. They love Jesus, some of them. I'm talking about their government and leadership. So what they done was they made laity, they made, they made the laity, they made the leadership, and then they made the people. And, and they were the strongest ones. See, in, in, the, in the early church in Acts, Everybody was, everybody was active. Everybody was active in, in the kingdom, in the church. Everybody. We the ones who said we got professionals now and we got laity. We got, we got professionals get paid and they do it and the rest of us go to the house. But, but know this right here. All of these affect the house of God, you know, like when we come to, to worship. But you know what? Some of these are done outside the church. But, but let me tell you like this. So when you get down, just for example, helps. See, we're going to develop the helps ministry. That's greeters and ushers. They fall under helps. So anybody can greet at the door, right? Brother Richie, you ain't got to be able to preach the word. You can stand there and smile and shake a hand and say, God bless you. Guess what else fall under helps? Hospitality. That's our people like Miss Cindy and different ones that cook food and everything like that. That's part of the ministry. That's blessing people's lives. That's where that falls. I'm telling you, everybody in here falls somewhere. Everybody. Now, you may not want to take your part. That's your prerogative. But you in here. <laughs> I'll move on now that I said it that strong. You in here. You may just, you know, not want to. But you there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel like I'm still in your Christmas present or something. <laughs> nah, I'm picking. Y'all fine. I'm having fun with it, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So, so here's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Is that there are differences in structure or in authority 
in the body of Christ. But everybody has a place in the kingdom. Everybody does. And, and, and so what, when we go back to this scripture, we're going to look at some things, right, in the word. I'm going I'm to show you what the word says about it. We're going to slow down and break it down for you. What you're going to see is, is that it takes all of this, takes all this to come to the fullness of the stature of Christ in the earth. Takes all this. And, and that's why he said, stop walking around the vanity of your mind like things are just going to get better and things are just going to be great. Churches have prayed for revival. God, let's have an outpouring of your spirit. Now hear what I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you something. You can have a move of God, but because you haven't, you don't have the proper structure, it only lasts a certain season. It's gone. It never was God's way. Just to have a move of His Spirit without the proper structure. Why? He talked about that with the new wine, with the wine skin. It, it'll get, fill up and bust and run out without the proper structure. Holy Ghost told me this on the way here, and I know it. Second Timothy chapter three it talks about in the last days. You don't you don't have to turn there? It says in the last days how men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They've become I am. We're in an I am moment right now in the world. Y'all know that. They even, uh, you know, Nike says just do it and other companies have, have it and says I am. It's all about me. And so we're in that generation so they'd be false accusers, liars, covenant breakers, and on and on and on. They would love pleasure more than they'd love God. That's what the Bible tells us. But listen to what he said. After all those things they'd be doing, said they would have a form of godliness but deny the power. On the way here tonight, I knew what I was going to preach. I knew what I was going to say, but I was right up the road, and the Holy Ghost told me, he said, Son, what I'm telling you is, you know, I could see it from one way and a clearer way, but he just gave me a little nudge, a little cherry on top that tonight. He said this, he said, he said, it is that form that is never, that seldom gets perfected, and so my power is always lacking. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. So, why? Because he said they have a form, it's not the right form, so they have no power. He said, so when you get the right form, you get the fullness of the power. We, we, we need, I guess what I'm telling you is, you know, I want to slow down, I want you to see it, right? I don't want this to be as a bunch of information. You're going to be like, I don't know what he was talking about. You are in this somewhere. And God has put it in you from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus put it in you. It's your gifting. So where we get confused sometimes, hear me now, I'm trying to make it real clear, right? Is that, is that your gifting that he's talking about is your office or it is your ministry. It is your calling. So sometimes where we get a little tangled up is with giftings and gifts of the Spirit. Two different things. Y'all with me? I'm not talking about gifts of the Spirit. I'm talking about what you need to fulfill in the earth to fulfill what God's put in you. Your part in His kingdom. See, like in the seven mountains, we we'll won't go into that tonight, but there are seven mountains of society. One of them is economics. And so in economics, we might have people in here that are entrepreneurs or stuff, and they make money. So what they, because they're so busy in work, but they give big to the Lord, and they fulfill their call, but they don't do anything at the church. They're not visiting. They ain't, you know what I mean? They ain't, that's their part. I'm telling you, everybody fits in, in this structure. Everybody. Let's move on. Let's look at the Word, right? So, uh, I'm just going to touch on these things. So it said that the He that ascended was first He that descended, and when He ascended, He said He gave gifts to men. He gave gifts to men. Listen, I'm going to try to preach this real short. So if you get in your mind right now, Jesus, right? He completed all the work of, of sacrifice, of bringing righteousness, us giving us access back to the Father through that right standing. In all of His coming to establish the kingdom of God in the earth, there was no way He was going to leave a void of us unable to walk or to continue to move his work forward and become the fullness of what he was in the earth. He had a plan. So when he conquered death, hell, and the grave, 
and was seated, crowned, and glorified, and seated at the right hand of the Father, he gave gifts to men. He said, now nobody will walk in the fullness of what I am in the earth alone, but if they can unite with each person recognizing their part, they will fulfill everything I did. And greater. Why? Because we're multiplied. It's his plan. So all we got to do is start saying, Father, I just want to be where I'm supposed to be. I just want to do what you want me to do. How could Jesus do this? Well, all of y'all know this verse right over. And, uh, and just stay with me. Don't turn there. You can write it down. Hebrews 2, 2, right? Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. He authored it. What? Our faith, our belief, our confidence, but our belief. You see what I'm saying? Jesus changed what we put our faith in. Now we have our faith in Him, in His blood, in His life. He said, and because of that faith, He said, no, I give it to you, now I can finish it. Now listen what it also says in Hebrews 3.1. Therefore, holy brethren, listen to this. Hebrews 3.1, partakers of the heavenly calling. Of the heavenly calling. I'm calling you to this if you will accept it. And when you do, it becomes a gifting. Listen to what he said. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Jesus is the highest, the chief, the foundational apostle of our faith. So when we get into that office of an apostle, you'll find out that what Jesus did was came and established, right? The kingdom of God and the earth, giving man access to the Father and to his kingdom, his way of doing things. So consider him and think about what he done and the complete work that he accomplished so you and I now are not mere men and women. We are part of his family. We are part of this process. He's just wanting his people to find their place. Um, your gifting is from Jesus, which is your office or your ministry, your position that he's called you to. Your gifting is for the furtherance or the establishment of the kingdom of God. And that is accomplished by what you supply or provide to others through your, God, through your gifting or your office. Hallelujah. You know, as we get into this, I've said a thousand times over, The pastor Lamar came to this church 32 whatever years ago. And what you have got to get a good grasp on, not that you don't, but if there's anybody here that don't, I've said this, like I said, countless times, that he's probably the best pastor that I've ever known. Me and him are not the same gift. That don't make one of us better than the other. You have to understand we're different. Just like there ain't no hardly two vehicles in the parking lot or two cats walking down the street or two dogs or nothing else. We are not the same gifting. He can preach, I can preach. We can go both go to the hospital. He have giftings I don't have. He has talents, abilities from God I don't have. So if you compare everybody the same, that's when the church gets messed up and, and start thinking, well, this one's better than that one. I like this one. I don't like it when they sing out of this. We have different giftings and in, in, in things from God. If we'll celebrate those, we receive that which they supply. It's a celebration. You know what I'm saying? It's a celebration. I mean... Pastor Lamar met Caleb and Chastity at the moment of their child's death. He didn't know them. My son looked at me. We were talking about finally got around to talking about the funeral. And I knew some of you in the church family are loving people and want to support us. I know that. But my son looked at me and he said, Daddy, 
If anyone didn't know Aiden personally, I don't want him at the funeral. And he turned and looked. He turned and looked at me and said, but Brother Lamar can be there. Caleb saw the gifty, the pastor, the shepherd. You are what people call you. You are to them what they know you as or what they call you. It's a funny thing, but I asked Pastor Lamar this. You hear what's coming out of my mouth? When I text you, what do I say? Pastor, every time, every time. It's not Lamar, it's not brother, it's pastor. Almost every time. I don't want him to be my brother. I want him to be a pastor. I know what I'm doing. I ain't saying it's wrong to call him brother. But God starts with leadership, of which I'm one. And if I can't respect him as pastor, how can I expect you to? Person is what you call him. I'm going to move on. There are diversities of giftings. That's offices and callings, anointings, ministries. Whatever word you want to use, it's those. It's giftings, right? I'm going to say it again. Offices, callings, anointings, ministries. But it's the same Lord Jesus Christ that gives them all. This is significant because I warn you to not compare people, especially in ministry. We all have a role to play and a part to do. And that which we supply and are equipped to perform, that's what we do. One ministry gift isn't better than another. Not in God's eyes. Because hear, hear this clear. You'll be held accountable for your faithfulness to what you're called to, not if you change the world. You might not be called to change the world. True story. When we look at Revelation and we come before the Father, you're going to find out, I'm preaching you another sermon now, that when He pulls out the book of your life and there's a book written, He'll also write, pull out the book that was written as you went through it. He'll compare and see how they mesh. That's what's going to happen. I'll show it to you in Scripture sometime if y'all don't know it, but it's what he does. So all I'm telling you tonight is is that we don't want none of y'all to be Pastor Lamar. I don't want any of y'all to be me. I don't think you're successful if you're just like, you know, you, you, you know, Billy Graham or whoever. You know what I'm saying? God's got something for you to do and a certain way to do it. But you know what? That's what we want to help develop. That's what we do as leadership. We help develop that. We celebrate that. We see the church grow and mature and become stronger because you're in your place. With this in mind, I'll be teaching on differences in the ministry gifts, what they are, how they function, and as a result, how we are designed to function together for the purpose of the King Jesus in the earth and the development of His body, the ecclesia, His church. How do we do that? How do we, you know... Hallelujah, it's a beautiful picture. <clears throat> if you would, turn over with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to be able to get with this. But what I did was, you're fixing to see where I got, you know, out of Ephesians 4, Brother Bruce, we got the five-fold ministry. Then when we go over to Corinthians, we'll find the other giftings. And he calls them right there, giftings. And they're giftings. So here's the thing, and I keep using giving because some people, and it's only one reason that I'm using that, because you might not see where it falls in this, in this alignment. But again, if you don't have people that are supernatural givers, we may never fulfill what God really wants around the world or even here at Beulah. I'm just saying, it's that important. That's why we don't belittle. You know, somebody could say, Brother Rich, somebody could say, well, you know, Ralph, he never comes to prayer. But Ralph gave $100,000 last year. 
It ain't about the money. That's his gift. That's his gifting to make money for the kingdom of God. So we got to stop judging and let people be who God's created them to be. I've always said this. The worst person to serve around the church is one that's forced to do something they don't want to do. Now what I found about the kingdom of God is this, is when you're faithful to do what you find for your hand to do, you will eventually end up where God wants you to be. So I'm not saying there's not a season of testing. There's something else you need to understand. I'm walking example. So I found that coming back here to Beulah and everything, preaching the word, it's changed, everything's changed for me in my life because I got 40 years experience. I'm not trying to pull on a scripture I don't know. I'm talking to you from what I know. What I know is, is that when we get deeper into this, you'll find out that you could actually be somewhere in here and God can change this, multiply, or add another one to you, or even bring you up into something else. You don't always end up where you start in the kingdom. You don't. So sometimes it's training, it's development. Y'all remember where, and I didn't pull up scripture, but y'all have heard it. He said, talking about our giftings, he said, you know, if it's teaching, wait on your teaching. He talked about giving at that same, same place. So what he was saying is that sometimes people are so ready to, you know, to do something, you know, not start in ministry. You know, they want to do something and they're not ready for it. And so when they're not ready for it, they launch out and God does some things because while they have faith, they know God, they're anointed, but they're not ready. They're not equipped like we're talking about equipping people. And so then every bad thing in the world happens. They get wounded. They get beat up. They give up. And a lot of people, some of y'all know people right now, I know people that have left ministry never to return. Because it ain't no rodeo. It ain't no circus. It ain't no game. It ain't fun. The devil hates you. Let's move on. Let's move on. I want want to try to get get to this here. 1 Corinthians, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to have to read the whole doggone chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. What did he just say? Spiritual gifts. He is not talking about gifts of the Spirit. He's talking about your spiritual gifting. So actually, right, because in verse 1, gifts is italicized. It was not in the original Greek. So he actually said, now concerning spiritual, brethren, but he's talking about the gifting about your office. Let's go on with it. You know that when you were Gentiles carried away in these dumb idols, even as you were led, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now therefore, he said, now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. Here's what I want to tell you is, is that I know that in spiritual giftings or gifts of the Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, working of miracles, all those gifts, I know that in in this right here, it applies that somebody might have a gift of healing, somebody might have a gift of healing, they can have cancer healed, and somebody else can pray for migraines, somebody might can pray for everything and it's healed. I'm just saying there can be differences in administrations or different manifestations of that gifting, but it's the same with our calling and our office. I've just showed you that there are differences, but it's the same Lord. But there are differences of administration to people's callings. Let's go on and I'll show you. Wherefore I give you to understand, uh, verse 4, Now there are diversities of the gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations. You see what he's saying? But the same Lord. Jesus is Lord. Your gifting came from the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew who to give what gift to for his work to continue in the earth. It was his choosing. Hallelujah. 
Let's go on. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. You ought to underline that right there. Tattoo it on your arm or something. He just said that unto every man was given a gifting so that we could all profit with all. That when we all come together, it's a beautiful working machine, the body of Christ, and everybody getting ministered to. It's healthy, it's strong, there's miracles, there's healings, there's hospitality, there's love, there's patience, there's, there's everything. Hallelujah to God. We have so often sought a greater anointing when we ought to seek our placement. That's good. I told y'all some of the struggles I had in churches I had before. You know why? Because, because of what they called me, it was not what I was. And because they wouldn't accept what I was, they didn't want me at their church. Because I was not what they were used to. That's true. Didn't do nothing wrong. They're just like, well, we got a different image. We'd like somebody to drink coffee with us today and tomorrow and the next day. I'm like, well, I'm working on a whole bunch of things. But I, I like coffee. I'm just saying. I mean, I do. I like catfish too and stuff. But <laughs> You got to try any way you can, Pastor Lamar. <laughs> Listen to this. Let's, let's go, go to verse 8 with me. Let's just flow through it. For the one is given the Spirit, uh, is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the gifts, uh, right? To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another workings of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. Another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. For as the body is one and there are many members, and all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Did you hear that? He said, let's read that backwards. He said, Christ is one, though he is in many members. But when we are come together, we make him up. We solidify who he is. That's good. Mm hmm Let's go on. Let's go on. Listen to this. Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. Is it not of the body? No, it is, but it's saying it's not. Right? Right? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Yeah, it is. It just don't know it is. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling be? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it pleased him. I told you he wasn't just talking about Holy Ghost gifts. He's talking about offices. But he started out with the spiritual giftings that might fulfill the office. That's good. Uh, let's go on. Hallelujah. And if we're all, uh, verse 19, and if we were all one member, where were the body? He said, where would the body be? It, but now are they many members but one body that I cannot say that I, have, uh, I don't have need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. Do y'all get the picture he's painting here? Is that it doesn't matter where you fall, we need you. You provide something we cannot do without and be complete or the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't show up without a smiling face making you feel at home without this being, and this be complete. Ah, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Where was I at? 23. And those members of, uh, listen, to the, listen to this. 22. 22. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary, y'all. 
They're necessary. I just claim the church. You're necessary. We can't come in here at a junkie church. That falls under helps right there. Clean church, that's right there. You're in, you're, you're in the kingdom right there. It's not a job. It's a calling. I just want to see it clean around here, Brother Randy. That's a calling. God gave you a passion. I don't want you cleaning the church if you don't want to. No, I'm serious. That's the way I roll. Don't make anybody do what they, they don't want to do. Don't feel called to. Why? You ain't doing it as unto the Lord. But when people do, it can be the craziest thing. I want to be in the nursery with the babies. You say, does anybody want to do that? Oh, yes, somebody does. And they love them. And they'll minister to them. They'll lay hands on them. They'll pray for them. They'll, you see what I'm saying? Amen. Now we have ministry in the nursery. Now we have ministry in children. Now we have ministry all over the place. You get what I'm saying? People in the right place. Oh, I could just talk about this all night. What time is it? Five, what, 550? Oh, okay. Roll on. Rock on. Let's go. Let's press in. I got some good things I want to share. This is all good, but I want to share some good things with you. Listen to this now. Even the feeble members are necessary, y'all. Listen. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Listen, as leadership, one of the things that we will try to do and, and try to be good at and get better at is that you might not have a microphone in your hand. But I know me and Pastor Lamar always telling people we appreciate them, we thank them, but that's what he's saying. The people that do the smallest things acknowledge them like they conquered the world. You know, I think the Father looks at that because if we're able to stop and acknowledge the smallest effort in the kingdom, get what I'm saying? How much more will God bless our effort and multiply it? So it's not about the big things. It's about everything. It's about everything. A few weeks ago, Brother Bruce said, he wanted to go see some people. He went down to Alexandria. He saw somebody in my family. It's the small things. I mean a lot of things. For our comely parts have no need, uh, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part that lacketh that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members <coughs> should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, they all rejoice with it. Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church. Y'all ready? First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. This, my friends, is where I got the first five and where we get the other five. God has set them in the church. He's not talking about spiritual gifts. He's talking about offices and ministries. Somebody, let me tell you right here. Let me touch on this just a second. Diversities of tongues. Number one, if you are able to pray in the Holy Ghost, chances are you're also an intercessor. Because when you pray in an unknown tongue, you speak not unto man but unto God. How is it when you pray in the Spirit? We don't know what we're saying, but God receives the praise, the glory. So when we're praying in the Spirit, diversities of tongues you could pray for everybody in this room and you don't know it but the Holy Ghost is leading you who to pray for when and what they need you don't even know what you're saying but you've made yourself a willing vessel that's another mini message tonight but it's the truth guess how else diversities of tongues can be used you know we've talked about this sign to the unbeliever but we'll, we'll press on let's press on but it's an office, it's a gift that the church needs. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the giftings of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? 
but covetous earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And he simply goes into, it doesn't diminish that chapter. He goes into talking about letting everything be done in love because if you don't, all of these great efforts, these giftings and callings are really diminished if you don't love God and love one another. That's what he's saying. But if you operate it in love, right, and, and honor one another, which is valuing, respecting. So if you can value the smallest of thing, you see somebody outside picking up trash, walk over and say, man, I appreciate you. I didn't get to talk to my brother after getting baptized Sunday, but the first person I saw was him walking in, and I said, man, I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. I am. Any man that humble himself, give his life to the Lord, commit it, get publicly baptized, say I'm living for the Lord, he's got my respect. He may not take the microphone, but I honor him as much as anybody in here. I don't know if I can go much further, but I got a lot more. But we have started. <clears throat> what are all these giftings for? If you would go back over to Ephesians, I'll wrap up. I'm going to share this, a beautiful picture. I'm going to try to share it in a couple minutes, which might be difficult. Go back to verse 11, please. God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. I just gave you all of these right here. They didn't list them there, but I just gave you all these, right? Y'all seen that in the Word of God? This right here will bring number one. If you're taking notes, this right here will bring the perfecting of the saints. That word perfecting is the word katartismos. It's a masculine noun which means to complete or to furnish or to equip. I hope you get that right there, this simple. And when we have this, everybody in, in our congregation, everybody under our influence can be completed in the Lord, can be fully furnished and equipped. The problem with so many people is they don't have any of this over them and flowing in their life. But they want to do something for God. You're not completed yet. See, the reason I'm submitted to authority and I do a thing a certain way because I wanted to finally have my... I wanted to be completed. I wanted to become mature. I wanted to, I wanted to have all impartation that I needed to get. Not just what I got from God, but from godly people as well. So he said that uh, when we all have this, so I'm just going to read you some things Holy Ghost gave me. Ministry gifts, this right here, help complete what the Lord has begun in you. They continue to furnish, listen to this, and supply that which you need to continue to develop. And they assist you in continuing or completing that equipping process so you can fulfill that which you've been called to and bring to maturity and manifestation that which God has put in you. Callings and giftings of the Spirit. Listen, ministry gifts are given for your development. Wherever I fall on here, we know Pastor Lamar falls here. That's not in rank of authority. That's the way they gave them. And I, can, and I understand that as well. This is, this is not a ranking of importance. This was of necessity. That's of necessity. Doesn't mean he's not the head of the local church. This is of necessity in the kingdom. You, you can't have a pastor if somebody hadn't first heard. Somebody can't hear unless nothing is done in the earth unless it's first revealed by the prophets. And unless you had an apostle to lay the foundation, our Lord Jesus Christ, there is no need for a pastor or a teacher. It's not in order of importance. It's in order of necessity. 
the way it functions, y'all. I didn't, I didn't make this thing up. <laughs> it ain't my, it ain't mine. It's the Father. You know what I'm saying? When, when I first got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, everything I wanted to be all this. <laughs> I'm gonna tear all that up. God's like, no, no you ain't. <laughs> You're probably not. <laughs> but boy, we have ambition. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all had great ambition, but boy, the devil come and knock your legs off. You say, you know, it'd be really nice if I had some of these other people to function with me. Oh, God. That was so good right there. I want to take up the offering. Amen. I can't be what God's called me to be without you. That's right. That's good. Somebody got to call me something. You can't be and fulfill what God's called you to unless somebody recognizes you as it. Then you can fulfill it. It comes out of you. You can't make a tire a donut and eat it. Well, you could, but you get what I'm saying? It's a tire. It goes on the car when you recognize that and put it on there, it functions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, when we call you what you are, You'll start functioning at such a high level for the kingdom of God. You'll say, I thought I needed more anointing. No, you needed placing. That's good. He said we're fitly joined together. We are fitly joined together. You are. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and that much more so as you see that day approaching. That does not mean coming to Beulah Church. That means being put in your right place. Forsake not. Stop resisting being put in your right place. The assembling of yourself together. What? As the body of Christ. Are you a finger? Are you a leg? Are you a foot? I know what what a bunch of y'all are. I do. And you can function at a high capacity if you're wanting to. But let's, I digress. So fitly joined is the same word that's used to put a, a arm that's out of socket back in socket. Some of you have been trying to do things you weren't supposed to do on this list and you said, I, I, I hate doing it. I just, I, I, y'all get what I'm saying? Can anybody identify with that? You've ever done anything that you just knew you wasn't supposed to do but you were trying to help? Lord, when everybody gets where they're supposed to be, what a beautiful picture. All right, so let's go on so I can... Next thing that all this is for, perfecting of the saints. Listen to this. Number two, working for the work of the ministry. Listen, for is important. For the work of the ministry. It's the, it's the Greek word ice, E-I-S, ice. And that word means to lead or put into a place. That is so important. Listen, this especially leadership up here, is is for the perfecting of the saints, listen, for the work of the ministry to be placed into your proper place of functionality. It is vital. They asked me to do the nursery and I just sat in the rocking chair because I really don't want to be back here. The kids know that. They know that. They all crying and they want mom and daddy and we having to bring folk. Now I'm not saying that's the only reason. I'm making a little fun. You know what I'm saying? Because that's one of the places not a bunch of people want to do. You know what I mean? But there's other things. You know. Uh, but y'all get my point. But when you are where you're supposed to be, there's 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 anointing. There's blessing. So. Ice means to place or to lead someone or to place into the proper place. He said, for the work of the ministry, you're placed for diaconia, the office or administration of your gift. Yeah, you got to be put in the right place to fulfill that which God put in you. It is supposed to be, uh, it is supposed to be the ministry gift, uh, your leadership in your life that trains you, imparts into you, and sees the development of that which God placed in you, then releases you or places you in the proper place in the body. When Brother Keith was here, i got to use this as an example. He called Austin over to his car because the Lord had gave him a word in service. But, but, but Brother Keith had been coming here to just get to know y'all, y'all to get to know him and just out of his love. And just, you know, that's why he's coming. He don't want the microphone. He don't have to preach, none of that stuff. And he prays for us daily. 
But the Lord had gave him a word for Austin during the service. Well, he didn't get up in front of everybody, and thus saith God. But he called Austin over to the vehicle before he left the parking lot, and he called me over to hear it. Well, I was standing there, and he said, I want you to hear this. And he said, I'm not going to name him. That's not my place. This is y'all's church. But he told him some things that God had called him to in, in this season, what he wanted him to do. When Austin walked away, he said, I didn't name him. That's your job. I ain't naming him. He didn't put him in the place in this church. He just told him what God was saying. You getting my point? That's a lot of wisdom in that. People sometimes step all over the line. Well, you're going to be the next praise and worship leader and they're a visiting minister. That's not your place. This ain't your house. That's how some churches get jacked up. People are trying to, to fulfill something that somebody said from thus saith God and they're not even in leadership here. Now they could say you have a calling into ministry and everything, but you can't place nobody. If you believe that they can, again, you don't understand the word of God. Because the people that were placed in the body of Christ in the early church went before the apostles and they placed them, be it them an evangelist or more so a pastor like Timothy in the church or whoever else it was. And there's many other examples. It came before the proper leadership before somebody was placed. They didn't just place people. I digress again. For the work of the ministry. Listen to this, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Again, the word, he says, for, that's being placed, that is bringing somebody into, and the body, uh, it says, the body of Christ uh, into edification. That means strengthened, built up with a solid foundation. When you're in the proper alignment you've received from the ministry gift that's over your life. that God has placed in your life, you will then be able to build up those who receive you, which in turn uh, will, you will see them established because of what you provide, what you supply. It will make them strong, secure, with a proper foundation, which brings stability. Here's what I'm telling you. Is, so I'm going to paint this picture for you when, when I close. Let me go to the next thing so I can stop. Till we all come into the unity of the faith. Till indicates that it is a process that we continue until the process of establishing everyone in the faith and then their purpose and calling is complete. Once everyone starts getting the process, that will solidif it will solidify each person's role and purpose. It then brings peace in that person who knows their role and their place in the church. Once a body learns how to function in each one of their particular offices or spiritual gifts, there is unity and peace because you have your place and no one is exactly like you. Each one is important and vital because of what you supply. Also, this accomplishes a united, singular, confident faith and belief and trust. It produces an atmosphere of faith and trust and peace. Nobody's wanting my spot. That's good. That is good. That is good. I tell you, I think so and so's wanting my spot and everything, and I don't, you know, know what to do. But I ain't saying it don't happen. I ain't saying you're wrong if you say it. What I'm saying is, is that that shouldn't happen. Because there's a place for everybody. Surely, right? I mean, we ain't got 10 million people in here. Surely, there's a place for everybody. Yeah, it is. I'm just kind of joking. Yeah, it is. Hallelujah. It is. So, all right, so let me, let me go on. He said this, and we'll come to the knowledge of the Son of God. Knowledge is epignosco. It comes from the word gnosko, which is when Jesus said, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Gnosko, I never knew you. That is experiential knowledge of someone, intimate relationship knowledge, because you've been with the Lord, right? So epi means uh, it, it is an understanding that uh, it's precise 
or correct knowledge. Listen to what he says. He says people won't come into a proper understanding until they're in their right place functioning the way they ought to function and realizing that I do what I'm called to do and that's what I do and nobody can take my place. And there's so much peace there even if I'm just parking cars. It's my place. And that's what I do for the kingdom of God. And there's anointing on that from the top to the bottom. There's not. I'm telling you, miracles can happen parking cars. It has nothing to do with your Holy Ghost gifting. It's your function. Right? I'm talking functions right now. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. He said, and so I'm going to, he goes on to finish this. He says, uh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going I'm to try to wrap this up the best I can like this right here. Explain those five or six things. If you understand tonight that I fall somewhere in God's kingdom and He has put me in an office, He has given me an administration, He has given me a place. Right? Is everybody with me? That's a good word, right? He's given you a place. He has. So if He's given you a place, then it will be the leadership that pours into you and that will acknowledge that place and you will be fitly joined That's what he said back in Corinthians. He was talking about the leadership, placing them in the proper place. When they are put in the proper place, listen to this. When people are put in the proper place and we show up on a Sunday and people are functioning in their role, Pastor Lamar, you didn't have to tell them, uh, you, you, you know, we need to do this or that. They're functioning. You don't have to worry about communion. They're functioning. You don't have to worry about greeting. You don't have to worry about the offer. You don't have to worry about the music. Functioning. We're functioning. Y'all with me? We're functioning. Guess what? There's anointing, supernatural empowerment now that is flowing from one to another, that which each one supplies. Do you understand now a little bit why the devil always wants to bring division in a church? If he can just jack up one person and go, well, I tell you, blah, 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 the anointing just stops. It sends a whole trigger of negative, negativism into the atmosphere, strife and unsettlement, and it breaks the peace of God. So, listen to me. So now, if we have this functioning, because of that large amount or little bit that you're supplying, every single person, every one of you, now starts to become more established, developing spiritually because you didn't realize that what Lulu had, I needed. She just said, I love you and I'm praying for you. That's all Lulu said. She's an intercessor, but it did something for me. It added to me, and all of a sudden, I'm more stable. I have just grew a little bit. I've just got some strength, and that's what we're doing, right? It says, and we will continue to function that way till we all come into the unity of the faith unto the fullness of the stature of the body of Christ. Guess what? Full anointing. Full anointing that our Lord Jesus walked in is what God wants for His church, for His ecclesia, for His people in the earth. And this won't happen alone. It will not happen with you by yourself. Listen, I'm, I'm anointed to some degree. But if I sit in my bedroom all alone, that anointing does me no good. Somebody got to receive it. I got to connect with somebody. So that's an overall picture tonight. I hope you see the functionality of your willingness and your understanding or acceptance now that I may have a total secular job, but there's something I can do for the Lord, right? There's something I can do. I can pray. I can give. I can, I can pray for people. God's anointed me. I can teach a class. There's something I can do. I can help around here. I can do anything or I can help with outreaches or, you know, whatever it is. Or I want to be in government, in leadership. You know, I'm just saying. Y'all see that? And so whatever role you play, we'll praise God for it, right? Because not everybody's called to do the same things. Y'all stand with me.